All right, so some of my favorites. This is the number one email that I have been receiving from all of you out there watching is when am I gonna have the printable to go with, I did a five little monkeys free printable a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, and it was a 10 frame to use with these stickers. Um, and I got these stickers, you can get them at Michael's, you can buy them on Amazon, but they're felt, they're, they're really nice felt stickers. You peel the back off and then they stick on. And I put magnets on the back with the monkeys. They come in packages with um, the frogs and the monkeys. And I made a little 10 frame that you could do on a cookie sheet with magnets um, to go with the monkeys and they were jumping on the bed, you know, five little monkeys jumping on the bed. And so people kept asking me, when are you going to come up with the frog one? Because those things, those stickers come in packages with the monkeys and the frogs. So it only makes sense, right? So I will have that 10 frame printable coming soon. But this is something else you could do right away with your frog stickers if you bought this set. So it's just clothespins, right? See, clothespins. And I put this, I took the backing off of the sticker and I stuck the frog on and it's nice quality felt. They come with the faces already on them. And this is a paint stick and you can get paint sticks at um, sometimes at your local home improvement store, although they've really cracked down on teacher, allowing teachers to have free paint sticks. But I ordered a huge set of paint sticks on Amazon because I remember one time I made my husband run around to several different home improvement stores to get paint sticks because I needed like five or something. And I said, you know what? I can buy them for less than a dollar a piece on Amazon. So I did. But now I have paint sticks galore. And so you can just use this paint stick in your clothes pins. These are spring loaded clothes pins. The best places to get your clothes pins are the dollar store. Um, this packet just happens to be from Daiso. They have them for a dollar fifty there and they're actually better quality than you get at the uh, US dollar stores. So, um, so five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. I'm trying to figure out which way to go because I'm backwards. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there's how many? One, two, three, four green and speckled frogs. And it just goes on and on like that. It's hard to do when I'm looking in the camera backwards, <laughs> but you know how it goes. So that's one way you can color this paint stick brown if you prefer. Um, super fun, super easy. Hey guys, welcome. Okay, so that's the first one. And so this, so this is something, this, here's how I would do this. If I was in a classroom right now and you were my students, we would read the um, story of Five Green and Speckled Frogs. It's really just a rhyme, but there's picture books that go with it. I would read that to the kids. We would use our fingers and we would sing it. And then another day I would get out the paint stick. And after we had practiced this for a few days and we'd been um, looking at the book and singing it together, um, I would pull this out and I would let them pull them off as we sang the song, super fun. I did that recently with a group of threes and um, with the uh, cookie sheet and the monkeys, they loved it. They couldn't wait to get their hands on that monkey and pull it off the bed. And they thought that was the coolest thing ever. So the same thing with the frog, super fun. Okay, that's the first one. And the next one, I have like so many clothespins in front of me, it's gonna be like a clothespin avalanche. Um, so we were talking about um, painting tips recently. I think this is the, I don't know if this is a pom-pom or cotton ball. I had all kinds of stuff in front of me. But if you wanna make your own paint brushes, you don't have to have fancy paint brushes from the teacher supply store. Um, they just dry out and wear out over time. You can put little things at the end of your clothespins, let kids dip those in paint and they can paint in different ways with different things. One cool idea I've seen is putting those little, um, lo not loofahs, but like those little mesh thingies you can use in the shower. They're kind of like loofahs, only they're made out of mesh, not out of real loofah. And you put them on the end and the kids can paint with those. This is just a cotton ball. And you could put natural materials on there, whatever you want, but they can dab paint on their pictures. Um, super easy way to have a painting activity with your kids. Hey, why do you need so many paint sticks? Marcia's husband asked her. 
make him watch this broadcast, Marsha, and he will know why you need so many pink sticks. Um, another good one is pom-poms. I always have, whoops, this one's got a cotton ball squished all over it. Um, pom-poms. You can get those at the dollar store frequently carries pom-poms. I order them in giant bulk bags from oriental.com because you can never have too many. Um, and you can put them in bowls. So I would have one empty bowl and one full bowl. Uh, it doesn't matter what colors or sizes as long as they can, the kids can pick them up with their clothespins and they transfer them from the empty bowl across their body to the full bowl. And as they're doing that, of course, they're exercising their pincher grasp as, as they're squeezing the clothespin and they're dropping the pom-pom into the empty bowl and they're crossing the midline. So that's one of my very favorite activities. Um, they can count them, so you can get one-to-one um, -one correspondence practice in there. They could roll a dice, and if they rolled a three, they could transfer three. I mean, all kinds of skills going on there. Well, thank you, Star. I haven't brushed it since like eight o'clock this morning. She said she likes my hair. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, this next one, I didn't have a clothesline. So I brought this little wire thingy and I'm gonna use it to demonstrate. Ooh, there goes all my, there's gonna be an avalanche of clothespins in just a minute, I promise you. Um, clotheslines, I can't say enough good things. This is my fake clothesline because I didn't have one down here in my office with me. Um, hanging clothes with clothespins is like crack for kids. They just think it is the coolest thing ever. I remember when my mom used to hang clothes on the line when I was a teenager and I'd roll my eyes and I didn't want to go outside and hang laundry. But for little kids, this is the coolest thing in the whole wide world. So I cut these little um, pieces of clothing out of paper. I printed them off. And look, mini clothespins. I also got these at Daiso, but you can find them at the craft store. Your Michaels, your AC Moore, your Joann's, whatever you've got and just have them clip them up. You could put a piece of yarn between two chairs, um, whatever you have, whatever you can do. Um, this is just a little wire rack that I had sitting around that I thought I would use um, just to demonstrate for you here on the show tonight. Um, but these little printable pieces, I got these from um, a clip art artist that I like. Uh, her store is called Whimsy Clips on Teachers Pay Teachers. And I just printed out the clothing that she has there and I cut it out. Um, you, can't, you can't make something out of her clip art and just sell the clip art, so I can't make anything out of it, but it's just fun to print it out and cut it out. I would laminate it, but it would glare on the screen for you, so I didn't laminate this set. Um, and of course you would have you know, a longer string so they could keep um, hanging it up. Another thing you could do if you have enough ink and enough cardstock and laminating film, you could write, I would do shirts, um, the child's name on shirts. So you, if their name was Maria, it would be M-A-R-I-A -A, and she would have five shirts and she could string them up. Each shirt would have a different letter on it. That would be a fun one. But every time they're doing this, they're using their fine motor skills. Um, you can have them uh, pattern the different pieces of clothing. It doesn't have to be all about fine motor. It can be about many different things. And I'm just waiting for my clothespins to avalanche here. <laughs> oh, you can totally do sight words on that, Angel, if you teach older kids. Not a problem. Absolutely. I'm trying to scroll through the comments. Um, just catching up. Laura from Mississippi. Uh, Paula from Massachusetts. Yay, did you have a snow day today, Paula? Um, Vicki from Argentina. Walmart has clothespins, absolutely. Hey, Lisa. Laura from Pennsylvania. Vicki from Knoxville. Yay. <laughs> I'm just catching up on the comments. They're so funny. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. Here's another one. Now, this is one of my many paint sticks. I don't know about you, um, but if you're a teacher, you probably had kids who needed extra help with those daily routines, those daily tasks. This is just one example. This is washing your hands. And so in this case, I love, love, love to use clothespins because I just, I just hot glued these pictures that I printed out. Okay, and I just put the numbers on there. That's more for me than it is for the kids. And so if you're trying to help a child learn a sequence of things, trying to learn, help them learn what comes first, what comes next, um, 
having pictures on, a, you can use a craft stick, it doesn't have to be a paint stick, but having picture prompts to help that child who's, ha who's really struggling. Um, not all kids would need this, but um, there's the first picture. So you could have the child help you before you went to the bathroom to wash your hands. You could say, now, today we're gonna work on washing our hands. And you could use this to introduce hand washing at the beginning of the year with all the kids. The first thing that you're going to do when you wash your hands is you're going to turn the water on. That's the first thing. The next thing you're going to do, I mean, and you can change this up to whatever sequence you prefer. You're going to, you're going to get your soap. You're going to put one pump of soap in your hand. That's important because usually they take 63 if you don't tell them. And then we're going to scrub our hands. A lot of kids get into the bathroom and they don't know that once they put the soap in their hands, you have to rub it together under the water. <laughs> All these things we take for granted. Um, and then the last thing you do is you wipe your hands. Now this is one, this one is designed for being used at home. So it has a picture of a towel. Um, I also have a set that has a picture of paper towels as well in my um, bathroom routine packet that I have. Um, this one just was released today, so I don't have anything printable with this yet, but these are just pictures that I have. Um, Jennifer says she's bracing for the blizzard. She's already off from school tomorrow. You all are so lucky. We haven't had any winter here. So this would be great, and it doesn't have to be washing your hands. It could be any sequence. I had a child one time who had a great difficulty transitioning from whole group to either independent or small group. Whenever we transitioned away from the carpet, he would just go nuts and he would just cartwheel across the room. And it, none of my usual tricks were helping. So we did this visual picture thing somewhat like this. I just had it on a piece of paper at the time. And we would put the pictures into the boxes together and we would go over. First, you're gonna stand up. <laughs> then you're gonna walk and I had a picture of shoes. And then you're going to go to, if we were going to small group, he would go to a table. If he was going to centers, he would go to centers. And then you're going to, and I would have pictures of each thing because he couldn't get from point A to point B without just cartwheeling across the room and hurting people and himself. And just, it was like a tornado. And this really helped. So this could help one of your kids too. Um, ooh, okay. This next one, I'm waiting for the avalanche. <laughs> Clothespins are avalanching. This is super easy. I like paper plates and clothespins. They're both things you can get at the dollar store. Um, I just wrote letters around the edges. You can get more sturdy paper plates if you want, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. And I just, on the clippy end, the pinchy part, the part that would pinch them if they put it on them, that's the part where you write the letter and they would have to match the letter, the clothespin with, to the letter like that. Wonderful. Hi, Malaysia's in the house. Um, see, all they have to do is match the clothespins to the letters. So you could have a bucket of clothespins with the letters written on them, and you could have different paper plates. So I would probably, I only put a few letters on here. I put six letters on here. So you could do, you could break up the alphabet into different chunks, and then one set of letters would be okay for a small group because the paper plates wouldn't have the same letters. Does that make sense? Um, super easy and quick to do. Doesn't cost. You can get these paper plates and giant packages at the dollar store. So that's a paper plate and clothespin idea that's educational as well as fine motor. This is another one. This is These are just dots and you could put, um, what do you call those? Uh, file folder dots, you know, sticker dots from the um, office supply store on here too. I find they just pick them off though. <laughs> so I just used my Sharpie or could do bingo daubers. I've, I've done dots with bingo daubers before, but I put a bunch of paper plates with different dot formations on them and, and they have to clip the alligators. See, the alligators go, arr, 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 and they have to clip that number of alligators to the plate. So this one has four dots and then they're gonna clip four alligators. And I made these clothespins with a green Sharpie. I just colored them with the green Sharpie. And then I put the little, eyes and nose on there. I don't know if that looks anything like an alligator, but kids think it does. <laughs> so you could have some paper plates with dots on them and then they could clip the alligators to them because the alligators like to go. So you've got number sense, counting, one-to-one -one correspondence, and fine motor in one activity. Um, super fun, super easy. I've still got more. 
Oh, th these are super easy. You've probably seen some of these around. I've got like pieces of pom pom everywhere. Um, same and different. So in this case, this and these are the mini clothespins y'all have been talking about. These are the minis. You can get those at your local craft store, your Hobby Lobby, your AC Moore, your Joann's, your Michaels, whatever you have. And this is just a strip. I just printed out this strip and um, they can mark the one that's different, right? Very simple and easy. I would have a stack of these available in a small group and they could look for, this is visual discrimination, by the way. So it's not just fine motor, they're visually discriminating the one that's different from the rest. So it's a visual discrimination as a precursor to reading. So now they're practicing a reading skill and a fine motor skill, right? Um, this one, let's see. <laughs> this one, I should have had it say Marsha. <laughs> this is another paint stick. Now you can see this name wasn't as long, so I probably could have used a craft stick with this one. Um, but I like to put a dot to let them know where to start because quite often they'll start clipping at the end of the name and then they'll go backwards and they'll, they'll go M A R I. And I'm like, no, no, no. Um, so anyway, they're going to put, they're going to clip the letters to their paint sticks, right? And this is one we usually do in the beginning of the year when we are learning our names and they absolutely love it. So they're getting uh, literacy practice, learning to identify their names, matching, um, and fine motor skills all at the same time. You can even add a red dot at the end if you want. I think they're going to know to stop when they get to the end, but... <laughs> Yay, B is here from Spain. Um, Marshall does this unless she uses a paper plate. That's super cool too. Um, here's another one. This one is very similar to the bathroom one. I just, some kids need extra help. <laughs> and you can totally do this in a whole group. But this is part of, um, these pictures come from my uh, printable pack. It hasn't been released yet, but it's how to care for books. And so we're going to teach the kids how to, what we do with the book and how we treat it and how to look at a book. And these pictures are used in that packet. Um, but it's, you know, we turn the pages. Well, this one is get a book and sit down. Obviously that's one. We look at the pictures and then when we're done, we put our book away. <laughs> so this is helpful for the beginning of the year when they are learning how to use your classroom library or how to look at a book. A lot of kids come in to preschool not knowing how to look at a book by themselves. And um, this is very helpful for that. So this is just, I just use clothespins and a paint stick. So, I mean, I just took pictures out of the packet, cut them out. I hot glued them on. Of course, I would laminate them. I didn't tonight just because it gives an ugly glare on the screen, but I laminate them. I hot glued them to the clothespins. And now anytime you want to help a child with the sequence, you can get the stick out. So one thing I like about it is you can use it for a whole group to introduce something, but for those kids who need extra support, you can give them their own stick. And there's only three of these. So you could do this on a craft stick and they could have it with them so they could look at it um, to follow the sequence. They don't have to, you don't have to, bring it out to them and show them. They can hold on to it and, and look at it and reference it. Um, and here's another one. I love, 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 love to tell stories with my paint sticks, okay? So these are all the pictures you can probably see. Let me hold it over here um, from Goodnight Moon. So I just printed these off the internet and I hot glued them to clothespins. And I think there's a few missing here. I was carrying it down the stairs and a few fell off. And you can, I wouldn't pull this out first and tell the story. This would be, if you've read the story of Goodnight Moon to your kids before, you can read it to them. And then the next day, or maybe the third time they've heard it or whatever, then you can pull your stick out. And as you tell the story, and there's a lot of clothespins here, so you can pass these out to the kids. And as you tell the story, I took them off the end, of course. <laughs> as you tell the story, they can come up and put their clothespin. So you're practicing listening skills. You're practicing self-regulation here because they have to wait. They have to listen for their 
thing to be called. They have to, and they're using their fine motor skills. It's just a great experience. And this one, I had it going from left to right to reinforce that left to right directionality. Um, in English, we read from left to right. So as we tell the story, we're going in this sequence and they can then, what you can do with this after you've done this in whole group many times and you've laminated it, um, then you can take the clothespins off and put the sticks in a bin and then the kids can even put a copy of the book with the, in the bin or the bucket or whatever it is. And during centers, they can do a retelling center with this stick using the book as a prompt for support. And they love it. And it's fine motor. It's retelling. It's oral language. It's sequencing. It's, it's memory. It's wonderful. Oh, there's one of my missing pictures from the story. Um, so those are some paint stick ideas that I had. Uh, not paint stick. Clothespin. A lot of them use paint sticks, though. I will say I had on my list of topics to... Uh, do Facebook Live broadcasts about one topic said paint sticks and the other said clothespins. And I said, well, this is kind of a clothespin paint stick stick mashup <laughs> because so many of these ideas use paint sticks. Um, so um, I printed these pictures from a, uh, a clip art store called Little Red. Little Red. I think it's called Little Red. I'll come back in the comments and leave a link to the store where I got them. And again, because they're pictures from a published book, I don't, I'm probably not going to make anything with them that I would share just because I'm, it, I don't know about the copyright. I don't think that would be ethical. So, uh, but I just went to her store and I bought this clip art and then I made this. So I think it was like $3 or something. Um, so many books, yes. I was thinking of The Napping House would be a good one, right? I was thinking of all the books you could do sequencing with. I have one for Brown Bear, Brown Bear. I found those pictures online and I made one of these paint sticks for Brown Bear, Brown Bear, because that's one we always do in the beginning of the year. Um, so any of those books, like if you give a mouse a cookie, those cyclical type books that have sequences in them, that would be awesome. The paint sticks, you can get them for free at the home improvement stores. Um, but because they've kind of cracked down on giving free paint sticks to teachers, <laughs> um, I ordered a giant batch of them on Amazon. I just put, I just went to Amazon and I put in paint stick in the search box <laughs> and I bought a bundle of them. I think they were less than, definitely less than a dollar a piece. I think I, I don't know, I have at least three dozen of them and they were very inexpensive. Um, <laughs> Hey, Melissa from Manitoba. Wonderful. I like, I don't know how she did it, but she linked to her city in the comment. That's pretty cool. Facebook is doing all kinds of fabulous stuff recently. So all kinds of changes. Um, hungry Caterpillar. Yes, Dana. That's the one I was trying to think of. All those classics that go in sequence. I used to print off the Hungry Caterpillar ones. I still have them somewhere um, from some website online that had, had them. And um, I sequenced with those for many years. There, that's a fabulous book to do. In the Hungry Caterpillar, I think it's Eric Carl Day or something coming up very soon. Um, <laughs> hey, Debbie from Australia, welcome. Say hi to Di. She watches from Australia too. Um, Marie in Maine, welcome. I bet you don't have a snow day up there, do you? In Maine, you're just used to the snow. Um, Bear hunt, said Di. Yes, yes. Bear Hunt is another awesome, awesome book to do that with. Fabulous. Um, I'm just going through the comments here to make sure I get them all. Uh, oh, yes. Louisa said, Hungry Caterpillar. I missed it. Uh, where do you keep your clothespins? Marsha, in my um, closet where I have all my crafting supplies, just the naked clothespins before I turn them into anything. I have a plastic shoe container. Uh, filled with clothespins. So in the, um, Marsh is a member of the teaching tribe. So if you go into the, into the vault, you can get the uh, supply labels and there's a picture of clothespins in there. And so I put that on the end of the tub and then all the clothespins live in there. And I make sure I keep it stocked with both the full and the mini size. Um, so I restocked recently. Um, Lori says she uses the paint sample samples from Home Depot. Oops. And she cuts them up and attach, attaches them to the clothespins and the kids match it back to an uncut paint swatch. Fabulous idea, Lori. Fabulous. 
Um, whoop, now the comments are coming. Let's see. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Carrie Ann. Um, somebody said something about a dinosaur, but I missed it. Carrie Ann is from New Zealand. Yay. I, that's on my bucket list. I want to go there someday. It looks so amazing. And I love islands. I have a thing for islands. Um, okay. Oh, stegosaurus, said Jennifer. We made stegosaurus cutouts. Then we used ABC clothespins to put on his back. Oh, yes. I bet that's really cute. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Marie says we're expecting 20 inches tomorrow in Maine. So do you think you'll have a snow day? 20 inches? No. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, March 20th, says Marsha. Is it Hungry Caterpillar Day or Eric Carl Day? I know it said something. It was coming up very soon. Um, Maryland. They're waiting for snow in Maryland. So it's like a lot of the East Coast, huh? Oh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. That's another good sequencing. Um, story to do on the paint stick. Yes. Hey, Sangeeta, the old lady who swallowed a fly. That's another good one. I have to go back through the comments and write these all down because you guys came up with all the, the good ones there. Um, Three Little Pigs, Goldilocks, says Shannon. Yes, those would be great for sequencing. Marie says they're going to have early release, 20 inches. Wow. 20 inches would shut Texas down for weeks. <laughs> we have no equipment to deal with that kind of thing. Ah. I know I would love to see some snow, Sangita. I do not, we do not have snow. All right, guys, I wanna thank everyone for stopping by tonight and um, checking out these paint stick ideas. And uh, if you're on my mailing list, and of course I'll put these in the tribe as well, um, but I'll make the uh, 10 frames for, uh, five frames and 10 frames for the five green and speckled frogs, and I'll, I'll send those out to those of you on my list. Um, if you're in the tribe, I'll put it over there in the vault for you first. Um, that will make eight printables for tribe members in the last two and a half weeks. <laughs> um, so make sure that you're on the list. Tom will drop a link for you if you're not already on the list. If you're already on the list, I'll send it out in my next email sometime this week. So make sure you keep an eye out for it. And it uses these little frog stickers and the little um, monkey stickers and... Um, I didn't give Tom a link, but we can go back and add later to those. All right. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Um, this Wednesday, we will be doing a Q&A, our March Q&A. So make sure you're following the page. This is Pre-K Pages. Make sure you click follow up there somewhere at the top, somewhere. And um, I'll send out a little Google form. So if you have a question you'd like to submit, submit it through the form. You'll, if you follow my page, you'll get notified when I post anything. So look for the Google form. And um, if you have a question you want to me to talk about or answer on live Wednesday night, submit it there. And that way I'll be ready to go at 7 Central, 8 Eastern Wednesday night. I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Have a good one, whether you're on spring break or on snow day. <laughs> Bye.